Hi, this is Rick Hansen on Risking the Dreaded Experience, the 29th practice in my book, Just One Thing. Uh, I believe this is one of the most important practices in the book. It's certainly been one of the most uh, important practices that I've done personally. So this Just One Minute may take more than just one minute. Uh, though, to summarize, as we grow up and also as adults, we encounter all kinds of experiences, pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. Very often when they're unpleasant or we see someone else having that painful, difficult, unpleasant experience, including a moderately or even mildly unpleasant experience, the brain naturally says, ooh, don't go there. I don't want to experience that again. And that learning becomes often unconscious. And then we go through life, hardly without thinking about it, trying to avoid risking that particular dreaded experience. But the result of that is we often end up playing small or walking around as an adult in a suit of armor that's three sizes too small for us. Maybe it made sense to do that thing to avoid the possibility of that particular dreaded experience when we were kids, but these days we really don't need to walk around with that same suit of armor. So what can we do about this? Uh, first, understand what are your dreaded experiences. Have some sense of insight into that, maybe drawing on the other practices in these just one minutes, like the one a, a few just one minutes ago on having insight. Second, really ask yourself three questions. One, how likely is it that if I do the thing that I fear would create the dreaded experience, how likely is it these days that it would actually happen? Maybe when you were young, it happened a lot, so it was very likely, but these days, it's not so likely. Second question, how bad would it be? How uncomfortable would it feel? Well, again, maybe as a kid or in a particular situation, previously as an adult, um, it really did feel awful, all right? But these days, given the emotional control that adults have, given the layers of, of growth that have occurred inside you, um, you know, in the interval since then, it probably would not be so bad at all, if it did happen at all in the first place. And then third, if it did happen, and even if it did feel bad, how could you cope? Again, these days, you likely have many more coping capabilities than you had when you were younger, uh, ways to relax the body, ways to use different practices like I've been talking about in these videos, um, grabbing that credit card and just getting out of there or finding other ways to distract yourself. You have a lot more ways to cope. Therefore, you can actually afford these days to, in calculated ways, risk certain key dreaded experiences that are making your life a lot smaller than it really needs to be. So what you can now do based on this understanding that you really could afford to risk those experiences, take calculated risks. Start small on the zero to 10 scale or stairway. Start with ones and twos. Be careful about even going up to three until you get used to those ones and twos. And then try it. Take a calculated risk, see how it turns out, Almost certainly, it'll turn out well. And when it does, use the methods I've talked about, about really taking in the good. So you can let it really sink in and register that it goes okay when you, for example, speak from the heart, or dream a bigger dream, or assert yourself, or disengage from a problematic relationship, or feel pleasure in your own body. It actually goes okay. So you can afford to risk the dreaded experience.